Hi, Algebra 2 kids. Uh, this is lesson 19. Um, you should have your notes out, and we need to make sure we're writing it down. So um, today I'm not here, of course. I'm just uh, across the way at the BCA doing a meeting, but just pretend that I am here <clears throat> working this out. So you should take out your notes right now and write this down. Um, you should write down the title and the objective, please. So and then if the teacher can please pause the video um, for about a couple minutes so the students can catch up and write this down. Okay, so we're going to move on here now. Here we go. So today we're going to talk about this thing called rationalizing radical denominators. So um, in math there are certain things that we don't like to keep in our final answer so we need to make sure that we don't keep them that way so that we, you know, we have the right <coughs> um, final answer the way it's supposed to look. It's kind of like uh, styles and clothes, right? We don't uh, do certain things with our clothes, right? We don't wear uh, certain clothes over other clothes. There's a certain order of things, right? Um, so it's the same idea for mathematics, um, except that it's not just a styling issue. It's also just so that it's a convenient and, and appropriate to use for another problem. So. Um, we're using equivalent forms. Anyways, we're going to be applying all the concepts we've learned and using this. So here we go. These are the steps. Okay, so why don't you write this down? So, teacher, please pause the video here so the students write down the steps. Okay, so students should have written down the steps. Um, so I wanted to read through them. If the denominator is the square root, we're going to multiply the denominator and numerator by itself. So for example, if we have a denominator with a square root 3 and a 3 on the denominator, we want to make sure that we keep it as, uh, we're going to multiply the numerator and denominator by this uh, rad 3. So this, uh, these two rad 3s, this is like step 1. Step 2, if the denominator is a binomial with a square root, multiply denominator and numerator with a conjugate. So a conjugate, um, Let's say your denominator looked like something like this. Let's say a plus x or like a or 3a plus rad 3. Let's say that was your denominator. A conjugate is um, is basically you take the first part. So let's say we had on the first part we have a here. It'd be like saying a, and then we're gonna take the second part plus x. We're gonna change it to a minus sign and say minus x. That's all we're doing. And when we do that, it makes it real nice because we can multiply. If we were to multiply these a times a is a squared, right? a uh, times negative x is negative ax. Um, x times, I'm sorry, x times a, sorry, negative ax. x times a is going to be positive ax. And then x times negative x is negative x squared, right? So and if I look at these, these two terms in the middle, they cancel out. So really, we could have just squared the first term, squared the last term, and put a minus sign in the middle, right? Super easy. So like on the second one, your conjugate would be 3a, um, I'm sorry, 3a minus rad x, right? Not rad x, I'm sorry. 3a minus um, rad 3. Okay, so just like in the last example, when we multiply this, what's 3a times 3a? 9a squared. So I'm going to square this first term and then square the last term. What's rad 3 times rad 3? Well, it's rad 3 squared, right? And put a minus sign in the middle. That's all we're going to do. And then think about rad 3 squared. What happens when you square a square root? It just cancels itself out, so all we're left with is just 3. So it's like saying 9a squared. Um, minus 3. So super easy, right? So um, that's what a conjugate is for. It makes it look a little bit nicer. So take a moment. Please pause the video again on this slide. Write this down. Okay, teachers should, or I'm sorry, students should have written this down. Um, let's continue on. So I'm going to show you a couple of problems. Pencils down right now. Just watch right now, students. So the the directions say simplify and then rationalize the denominator. So you got two parts here. The simplify part you should already be good at. On number one, you got three. 
rad 4 over rad 6 so just like before we're going to we're going to take this first um, term and we're going to just uh, say okay the the denominator has a coefficient of 1 so we're going to rewrite this as a 3 over 1 times rad 4 over rad 6 then I'm going to simplify right 4 over 6 becomes 2 over 3 I can't do anything else with that so I'm just going to rewrite this as 3 rad 2 over 1 times rad 3 is rad 3, right? Now, this is where the rationalized part comes. This is what the part we don't like in math. We don't like to have a denominator that has a square root. So we are going to take that away by doing the following. We're going to multiply the bottom by rad 3 and the numerator by rad 3. And then we, get, uh, we could rationalize it. And watch what happens here. I'm going to multiply this out. So the uh, denominator is going to be rad 3 times rad 3, right? If I take these two, don't I get rad 3 squared, right? And then the numerator, I got 3 times 1 is going to be 3. Um, and then rad 2 times rad 3 is going to be rad 6, okay? Or rad, rad 2 times rad 3, okay? I'm going to take this problem up here so you can see it, all right? So look at this numerator. The numerator is like rad 2 times rad 3, which is rad 6, right? Denominator, look what happens. We got rad 3 squared is going to, we're going to cancel, take this denominator and cancel out the 2 with the square, leaving just 3. Okay? Now, if I look at this problem now, don't, can't I simplify this some more? Rad 3 and rad 3 cancel out. I'm sorry, 3 and 3 cancel out, just leaving 1 and 1. So we got rad 6 all over 1, which is just rad 6. Okay? That makes sense? So that's number one. Seems like a lot of work, but the whole purpose of it is so that we don't end up with an answer like this. This looks a lot uglier than this, right? So that's why we're doing that. Make sense? Okay, number two. Number two is a little bit more difficult. This is the hardest kind of problem you'll deal with. So the denominator here, um, we're noticing, let's say this is your final answer. Denominator here has this uh, binomial, and it's got this uh, negative or minus rad 2 here. So on this one, we're going to have to multiply by the conjugate. So the conjugate of 4 minus rad 2 is going to be 4 plus rad 2. And all I'm doing is just changing this negative, copying it down, changing the negative to a positive. That's all I'm doing, okay? So whatever I do in my denominator, I also do in my numerator. So um, we're going to multiply the numerator times 4 rad 2. Okay, so I'm going to multiply the numerator by uh, 4 plus rad 2 also. Because that's what I did in my denominator. And each of these numerators has its own set of parentheses. So it's like I'm foiling. Just multiply across. Okay, so the numerator now. Let's do that. We got negative 2 times 4 is going to be negative 8. We got um, negative 2, sorry, negative 8. Let me erase that rainbow. We got negative 2 times um, rad 2 is going to be negative 2 rad 2. And then we got, oh, should have erased that again. Negative 2 rad 2. And then we got um, negative 2 rad 5 times 4 is going to be negative 8 rad 5. And then we got negative 2 rad 5 times rad 2 is going to be negative 2 rad 10. Okay, so the denominator now, the denominator is actually the easier part. Square the first term. What's 4 squared? 16, right? Square the second term. What's, um, what's rad 2 squared? Oh, man, sorry about that. What just happened here? What's, um, so I'm sorry, 4 squared, denominator squared is going to be 16, right? And then uh, rad 2 squared is just going to be rad 2, and then you're going to square it, right? I'll put a minus sign there. Now let's look at this numerator. This numerator is kind of crazy looking, right? Can I combine anything? No. I can't even simplify anything. Like this, these rad 10, rad 5, rad 2, I can't do anything. And then this one doesn't even have a radical. So that looks kind of crazy, right? So... Don't worry about it, just rewrite it. You just got to put negative 8, because there aren't any like terms, so we're just going to bring down everything that's there. 
So I'm bringing down the numerator, the denominator. I notice that it's going to be the square root root's going to cancel with the square leaving 2, right? And I think, what's 16 minus 2? Well, that is 14, right? So I'm going to bring down a 14 here. Then I'm noticing, I'm almost done here. Now my denominator looks nice and pretty. It doesn't have any sort of, like, um, radical signs in it. So what I'm going to do now is see if I could simplify anything. So I'm looking at all my terms. This is a term, this is a term, this is a term, this is a term, and this is a term. Look at all my coefficients. we got negative 8 negative 2, negative 8, negative 2, 14, right? So what am I noticing on all of these? They all are even, right? So can't 2 go into all, all of them? So what's 14 divided by 2? 7. This is like saying negative 8 divided by 2, which is negative 4. This is going to be negative 1, negative 4, negative 1, right? So can't simplify it anymore, so now we're going to rewrite this again with our final answer. Negative 4 minus 1 times rad 2 is just rad 2. Minus 4, rad 5, all, and then minus 1, rad 10, which is minus rad 10, all over 7. Okay? Can't simplify anymore. That's your final answer. All right? So big number 2, right? That's the hardest kind of problem you'll deal with, so I want you to know that. All right, so th this is uh, rationalizing the denominator, denominator. We should pause the video here and have students write down these two problems, okay? So let's pause the video. Let's give them about four minutes to write this down or until everyone's done. Okay, students should be done now. Let's work on number, on number uh, three. Here goes, so number three now, same steps, okay? So let's write down number three. I'll start this one off, okay? So number three, we got rad five over two rad two. So let's look at this. Uh, rad five over two rad two. We're going to take this denominator and we want to, we notice there's a rad two there, so let's multiply it by rad two. Because it's a monomial, there's no conjugate there. So we're doing this, okay? And you can write this down in your notes, actually, because we don't have whiteboards today, okay? So don't worry about that. All right, so then we start simplifying. What's rad 5 times rad 2? Rad 10, right? And then at the denominator, we got 2 over 2, or square root of 2 times square root of 2 is going to be, you know, square root of 2 squared, or square root of 4, right? Doesn't that cancel out? Another way you can look at this is square root of 4, right? Right? So now I'm going to keep going here. This is like saying square root of 10 over 2 times... Oh, that's supposed to say 4, right? Four, square root of 4 is going to be 2, right? And then we have uh, 10 over, or rad 10 over 4. Can't do anything else. The number in front of the rad 10 is a 1, so the 1 and the 4, you can't simplify anymore, so we're done. Okay? So check your work. Let's have you try to do number 4. So let's have everyone, uh, or let's have the everyone do this problem. Teacher, please pause the video. Okay, so students should have attempted this for about a minute, okay? So let's, let's see how you did. The first thing I would do is notice that the denominator is rad 10, so I'm going to take this denominator rad 10. Numerator, we've got rad 10 also. And then we want to take parentheses around the top. So we got 3 rad 10 minus rad 20 all over 10, right? The denominator is rad 10 times rad 10, which is 10. Can I do anything in the numerator? Yep, we get this rad 20, right? So rad 20 is like saying, right, I could take out a 4. It's like 4 times 5, so square root of 4 is 2. And the square root of 5 stays there. Denominator is 10, right? Can't do anything else, so we're done. Okay, next one. Number 5. Number 5, I'll start off. Please write this down for a moment. In your notes. Okay, so number five, we got rad six plus rad two in that denominator. We don't like that, so we're going to multiply by the conjugate. So we got rad six minus rad two. Denominator, we're going to do the same thing. Okay, so let's write that down. All right, the next thing we're going to do is start multiplying this out. Remember, the whole numerator, whole denominator has its own set of parentheses. 
So we're going to multiply this out. We got 4 times rad 6 is going to be 4 times rad 6 minus 4 times rad 2. Denominator is going to be rad 6 times rad 6. Remember, we're just squaring it, so it's going to be rad 6 squared, or we could look at it as rad 36, right? Okay. And then we got 2 squared. We're going to put a minus sign in between. 2 squared is going to be like saying rad 4. Okay. Okay. Let's see you try to finish this problem. Let's have the teacher pause here and, and give the students about a minute. Okay. So you should be done. Checking your work now. Here we go. So I'm going to keep going on this problem. We got 4 rad 6 minus 4 rad 2. Denominator, we got uh, square root of 36 is 6. Square root of 4 is 2. So 6 minus 2, again, is going to be 4. I don't know why it's doing that. Oh, sorry about that. So 6 minus 2 is 4, right? So I have this down here. So bringing the rest of the problem down, we've got 4 on the denominator now, 4 rad 6 minus 4 rad 2. And then I noticed that there's a <clears throat> 4 in each of these sections, so in all my terms, so I could just cancel those out. Numerator is just rad 6 minus rad 2. Denominator is over 1, so we don't need to keep it, okay? Last one, the big one, right? Let's have you try this out. Teacher, please pause the video here. Have students take about three minutes to try this on their own. And then I will show you how to do this. Okay, here we go, number six. So what you would do, here we go, is going to be, uh, do you see this denominator? It's got this rad, or four rad six, and it's minus. So check this out. Instead of it being minus, we're going to do three plus four rad six. Okay, so it's the opposite, right? Because it's going to multiply nicely. Do that into the numerator, the denominator also. Sorry, make a little space here. Now I start multiplying this out. We got three times th rad three is going to be the term 3 rad 3, okay? Then we got rad 3 times 4 rad 6 is going to be positive 4 rad 18. Okay, then we got rad 5 times rad 3 is going to be th minus 3 rad 5. And then we got negative rad 5 t times uh, positive 4 rad 6 is going to be negative 4 rad 30. Okay? Denominator, square the first term, 3 squared is, that's right, it's 9, okay? And then we got 4, rad 6 squared, what's 4 squared? 16, right? Rad 6 squared is going to be just 6, right? I'm just going to put that down. You could skip steps if you're noticing that, all right? Numerator, I can't simplify any of these terms. I can't simplify rad 3, I can't simplify rad 18, can't simplify rad 5, and I can't simplify rad 30. So I'm going to leave those alone, but I'll rewrite them in descending order. So it looks like rad 3 minus 3 rad 5 minus 4 rad 18, or plus 4 rad 18, and then minus 4 rad 30, okay? The denominator, we got 16 times 6 is 96. So 9 minus 96 is actually negative 87, okay? So again, I had... 9 minus 96 is going to be negative 87. Okay, I don't like a negative in my denominator. That's something we don't like, so we're going to put that in the numerator. So pretend the whole numerator is its own parentheses, so it's positive rad 3. So since we have a negative here, now I have to change my numerator. So um, sorry about that. Got a little bit of a mistake here. So we're going to take this denominator. Oh. Keep doing that. Okay, here we go. So we got the minus sign here, the numerator, and now we're going to switch the signs. You got negative rad 3 plus 3 rad 5 minus 4 rad 18 plus 4 rad 30, all over positive 87. That's your answer, okay? So big problem, right? These are kind of hard, I know. You're probably freaking out right now. Okay, so, but this is something you do need to know how to do. It's like this is Algebra 2 stuff now. Um, this concept, you, you kind of start touching on in Algebra 1. You should have. But this second kind of problem is Algebra 2 stuff for sure. Okay? And something you should know how to do. Um, so please keep that in mind. This is not like... Um,
you know, something we skip over. Okay, and I know you don't think that way. Just, just want to make sure you know that. So, super important. So the lo that's the closure we usually do. We're gonna skip that for today. So, this is what I like to teach you to do. I like and students to do. Students, you're gonna be doing these eight problems for the rest of the period on a separate sheet of paper. Um, and I'm gonna give you the answers in a moment here. Okay, because you know I always give you the answers. So. Make sure you check your work when I show the answer. So uh, I'm going to have the teacher give you about uh, 12 minutes to do these eight problems um, or until about two minutes to the end of the period. Actually, let's do like three to four minutes to the end of the period. And then um, you'll work it, these out as far as you can. Um, and then at three to four minutes to the end of the period, the substitute teacher will uh, continue playing the video and I will show you the answers, okay? So let's pause the video here, have students work on this. All right, should have paused the video, and here are your answers. So check your work. Okay, everyone's checking their work. All right, and so uh, students, I'll be back tomorrow. Tonight there is no other homework other than your AMs, so we will talk about this tomorrow. There, so keep up on your AMs. Uh, I didn't add anything new today, so um, just do it. Just keep catching up. So. Remember Monday we have to do 24 AMs um, or as far as you can go and then we have 9, or I'm sorry, 24 AM 2.0s and then there's 9 regular AMs, okay? Anyways, that concludes the video. Thank you.